All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about section four, the last section of chapter three. We're going to talk about cycles of matter. By the end of this lesson, you should know all these things, uh, as well as these key terms. So if you want to take a screenshot, go ahead and we'll get started. All right, so as we start talking about cycles of matter in the environment and ecosystems, um, it's important to, to realize why this is even important for an ecosystem, right? So matter is any stuff in the environment, right? All physical matter, um, whether it's liquid, solid, or gas, and all this stuff is what makes up life, right? And if we think back to chapter two, we think about building blocks of organisms, okay? So for all life on Earth, like we talked about, there's a couple crucial things for life to take place. One of them is water, right? So we can't have life, we can't have organisms if we don't have water. Um, and another big one, right, our favorite, the macromolecules, okay, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids, okay. Um, and if we remember, right, these four macromolecules, they all have, uh, can be broken down into monomers, right, as we see here, very complex by how much we can break this down, okay. Um, so the building blocks of organisms, whether it's water, macromolecules, right, a lot of times they're based on basic elements, basic elements of matter. Um, which we'll talk more about these. And when we talk about these building blocks, it's important to know that they are recycled uh, in the biosphere, okay? So unlike energy, which as we talked about in trophic levels, eventually just gets dissipated into heat, right, and is lost as we move up trophic levels, matter is recycled, okay? And we think about this through our decomposers, right? As we move up trophic levels from the first to the second to the third, right, uh, we said decomposers decompose that top trophic level and put nutrients back into the soil. Okay, so like we said, this is an example of recycling, right? We're recycling the matter in the biosphere. And this happens through biogeochemical cycles, right? So bio, we have life. We have geo, which means like geology or processes through the earth. And we have chemical, okay, referring to chemical processes, atoms forming bonds. Um, so right, we said matter is recycled through the biosphere, just how we said last section, that decomposers decompose living organisms and put the nutrients back into the soil. It happens through these processes, right? And I like this picture because it, it sh it's a good representation of the difference between energy and matter, right? Energy starts at the bottom of the food chain uh, and eventually goes up and gets lost as heat, right? Whereas matter is recycled. So if we look here at this water reel, right, the energy is spinning the water wheel. But once the water goes down, all right, it's not going to come back up and re-spin the wheel. Whereas with the wheel, which represents matter, right, as it turns around, every time it turns, the matter comes back down, comes back up, keeps going in a circle. Okay, so if you want to think about it in this way, energy would be like the water that powers the water wheel. So energy powers um, the cycles of matter, whereas the matter itself, the stuff, the nutrients, the elements, keeps going around in circles from producer to consumer. So if we're talking about matter cycling through an ecosystem as opposed to energy, which just makes a one way, right? How is matter actually cycled through the ecosystem? There's four ways that this is gonna happen. The first one is through biological processes, right? So if you go out and exercise, like this guy here, okay, he's exercising, um, you're going to use matter, right? You're going to burn off energy like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids as energy. You're going to burn it up. Also, whenever we go to the bathroom, right, we're going to excrete waste. And in that waste, there still is plenty of matter, right? There is nutrients in there. There is other physical material. So the first way which matter is cycled through the ecosystem is through biological processes. All right, the second way matter is cycled through is through geological processes, okay? And this refers to processes of the earth, geology, rocks, right? So right here we have a cross section of the earth, right? We have the outer crust, the mantle, the core, okay? And as we start talking about these nutrients and matter and how they're cycled through, we see that the actual earth, the dirt, plays a huge role in it, right? And as earth's geological processes, uh, sometimes we have volcanoes that erupt, right? We have volcanoes, um, rocks move, we have sedimentary rock, right? Um, rocks become part of the ocean. So these geological processes actually move lots of matter and nutrients around uh, ecosystems. So the second is geological. The third um, process is humans, right? Humans have a huge impact 
uh, on ecosystems, right? We build factories, we cut down trees, we light fires, okay? Um, all these things that humans do, okay, uh, are going to cycle matter through the ecosystem. Okay, for example, factories uh, let out CO2 into the atmosphere, right? And they increase greenhouse gases. Uh, so humans cycle matter through. And the last one, the fourth one, is going to be chemical and physical processes, right? Chemical and physical. And a great way to show this is a rainstorm with lightning, right? Lightning has lots of energy and it can chemically change molecules found in the atmosphere in an ecosystem. Uh, rain is a physical process, right, that moves matter through the ecosystem, like water, okay? So these processes, chemical and physical, are the fourth way in which matter is cycled. All right, so the first cycle we're going to talk about is the water cycle, okay? So water moves around the environment uh, in many different ways. And like we said, water is crucial for life, and how it moves through an ecosystem in the water cycle uh, is crucial to giving life to all different types of life forms. Uh, and basically, as you see, we actually have one big circle here uh, in the water cycle. So normally, right, let's say water starts uh, up right in ponds and lakes and stuff, okay? Um, water eventually evaporates. It evaporates from lakes, it evaporates from the ocean, um, and it starts to go into the atmosphere and forms clouds, right? From clouds, eventually they'll start to rain or snow, any type of precipitation, precipitation sleet. Uh, we see here, right, it snows on the mountains. Here's Mr. Toto skiing. Um, yay, skiing. Okay, so rain and snow, right? Um, eventually this forms runoff, okay, where when snow melts, right, it comes down through the mountains, into the valleys, and comes into the rivers, right? Rivers all lead to, again, lakes or oceans. Um, some of the water goes into the soil, right, down into the water table here. Um, eventually, this will leak out into the ocean, too. And we see it happen again, right? Evaporation starts, it goes into the atmosphere, and rains, right? So this is the water cycle, how water moves through the environment. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is nutrient cycles, okay? And a nutrient is a chemical substance that organisms need to sustain life. Uh, we'll talk plenty about nutrients this year. All right, but nutrients are what make life possible. Uh, and nutrients are really based, for in our case for right now, among three important chemicals. The first one is carbon, okay? So carbon, like we talked about in macromolecules, is really cool because it forms rings and chains, uh, forms all these huge molecules essential to life. The next one is nitrogen, okay? So carbon, kind of like carbon's older brother here, atomic number of seven. Uh, nitrogen is also important for nutrients. The third one we'll talk about is phosphorus. Okay, so these three chemicals are really important uh, in forming nutrients in the environment. So the first nutrient cycle we're going to talk about is the carbon cycle. Uh, like we said, carbon is our long-lost friend. You know all about this, right? It forms um, major macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. Uh, without carbon, we really wouldn't have life, okay? Um, and in the carbon cycle, right, there's really two main ways that carbon is going to flow here. Uh, we're going to have lots of carbon in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide primarily, okay? Um, and as we all know, and we'll learn plenty more about, plants, like trees, do a process called photosynthesis, okay? And in photosynthesis, they're going to take this carbon from carbon dioxide, um, and bring it down and make sugars, okay? So we see carbon dioxide coming from the atmosphere here down into trees, right? And plants and celery and broccoli and asparagus. Um, and eventually things like broccoli and asparagus and trees, they're going to get eaten, okay? And this carbon's going to go to different animals like the bunny rabbit, okay? Trees are going to fall over and decompose and carbon's going to go into the soil. Uh, and then little guys like this coyote over here is going to come and eat the bunny rabbit. Okay, oh, looks kind of like a food chain like we were talking about here the other day. Uh, and then eventually, right, this coyote is going to die. He might go into the soil and put carbon in there. Um, when we do respiration, right, the opposite of photosynthesis, we take in oxygen and we let out carbon dioxide. Okay, uh, also things like we said, human influences, factories are going to let out lots of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Um, okay, so again, the carbon cycle is basically we're moving carbon back and forth between the atmosphere 
uh, and things on the ground and in the ground. Okay, we form again this big circle of carbon moving around. The next nutrient cycle we're going to talk about is the nitrogen cycle. Uh, and nitrogen is really important uh, because it makes amino acids, okay, which help make up proteins. It also is used in your DNA and RNA. Okay, so living things need nitrogen. Um, now, nitrogen actually is the most common gas found in the atmosphere. It's about 70% of the atmosphere is nitrogen gas. Um, so there's a lot of nitrogen floating around in gas form, uh, but that's not really good because most organisms like ourselves can't just breathe in nitrogen gas uh, and use it. Okay, so this is why we have two major processes in the nitrogen cycle. Um, the first one is nitrogen fixation. Okay, and basically nitrogen fixation is when little bacteria and other guys, they take nitrogen gas, or N2, uh, and they convert it into useful forms like ammonia uh, and other nitrates that are found in the soil uh, and living things. Okay, so nitrogen fixation, bacteria take nitrogen gas and make it into a useful form. All right, so if we look at our little picture here, um, we have lots of atmospheric nitrogen, nitrogen gas around, uh, and bacteria um, and other things make it into these useful forms, right? Ends up in the soil, and then things like corn and other plants are going to use nitrogen as they grow, okay? And this is why if you ever buy fertilizer, like at the at Home Depot or any store like that, um, they'll have a lot of nitrogen in there, right? It helps plants go grow, makes a good fertilizer. Um, and like, again, just like we talked about in our food web and our trophic levels, uh, these producers are going to use the nitrogen, take it up from the soil, uh, and then it's going to go into the next animal, like this cow here, uh, and then it goes into your hamburger at Wendy's that you're going to have for lunch. Um, right? And then eventually you're going to deposit nitrogen back into the soil. Okay, And this is going to bring us to our next process in the nitrogen cycle called, called denitrification, right? where it gets converted back into nitrous, nitrogen gas, goes into the atmosphere, and then it starts all over again. All right, the third and final nutrient cycle we'll talk about is the phosphorus cycle. Okay, so phosphorus is an important part of DNA and RNA molecules, right? We've talked about phosphate groups and nucleic acids. Um, the thing about phosphorus is it's not really abundant in the biosphere, okay? It's not like nitrogen um, and carbon, which is everywhere, okay? But it still plays a crucial role. So how do we get it, okay? Phosphorus is going to come from rocks, okay? Um, as rocks erode and break down, um, phosphorus is going to start to break loose for them, okay? It'll especially be carried by water, okay? And then water will deposit it into the ground. Um, sometimes it'll end up in the ocean and we'll have phosphorus dissolved in the ocean, which all the little fishies will start to eat, okay? And just like everything else we've been talking about here, uh, it kind of centers around the food web, the food chain. Um, your producers are going to take up phosphorus from the soil, Okay, your next level of consumer is going to eat them. Next level of consumer is going to eat them. Okay, eventually it's deposited back into the soil. It might then run off back into the ocean. Okay, uh, and this is how we have our phosphorus cycle. Again, making this big, long cycle from rocks to dirt to living things, and then back into the ground. Cool. All right, so that's it for nutrient cycles. Quite a bit. Uh, go back and review. Make sure you know all the objectives and key terms. If you have any questions... Uh, feel free to email me or tweet at me. Uh, thanks for playing, kids, and we'll see you tomorrow.